today's interview will be on getting a full funded masters to study in the United Kingdom. Hello everyone. For those new to my channel, I'm Siam Shoydnur, a rising senior Bangladeshi studying applied math at Harvard. As you might have known, this playlist is a playlist where I talk about how you can get into top universities. The videos are on informational videos such as SATs, essays. The videos are there for undergrad, so getting into top universities across different countries like UK, Australia, US, Harvard, Princeton, and whatnot. And the videos are also for postgrad, so masters in top universities as well. If you want more of these videos, you know what to do. Subscribe to this channel right now. Smash that thumbs up button. This will help us beat the YouTube algorithm and the playlist will hopefully reach more people. Today I have an amazing guest with me. His name is Dr. Tazdi Hassan and he's a researcher working on mental health of vulnerable population in Lusaka, Zambia as the project director of the Department of Mental Health Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Um, he's an amazing person. He saw my playlist and he reached out to me because today's interview will be on getting a full funded master's to study in the United Kingdom. Yes, I got a lot of questions about how do you get to study in the UK with a full funded scholarship, especially for masters. And today's interview is just for that. So I'm glad to have him on the show. So Tazdik Bhai, which university did you go to for your master's in the UK? Uh, and which scholarship did you get? Uh, thank you, Siam. I have been to London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and King's College London. It was a combined master's uh, offered by Center for Global Mental Health. And the master's was popularly known as Global Mental Health Masters. And the scholarship I received was Commonwealth Scholarship. And it was, you know, a very popular and prestigious scholarship by the United Kingdom government. And interestingly, I received the Shivening Scholarship as well for the same course and Commonwealth uh, Shared Scholarship. I was shortlisted for another course the same year, but I chose to you know, receive the Commonwealth Scholarship. Okay, so you got a lot of scholarships to study in the UK. Uh, and what I'm getting is that these scholarships have different benefits. So you eventually ended up selecting the Commonwealth Scholarship to st do your master's at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, but you also got the Shevening Scholarship and the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. Are all of these scholarships full funded for masters or do they have differences? Yes, all of these three masters, they have uh, the full funding, including, you know, living and accommodation expenses and the tuition fees. And they give you, a, it's not that big, the amount of money they uh, provide us. Uh, it's it's a standard uh, money, standard, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think, I, I, what, what should I say like this? Uh, money is not a good word to say. So it's a standard amount of uh, scholarship they provide us, which is uh, applicable, I think, uh, for that one year. And I, I was with my family. The very interesting thing is like with that space, like that small, small amount of money, I survived with my wife and my son. So I think it was pretty wow. good. So, Tazdik Bhai, you spoke about three full-funded scholarships, the Commonwealth, the Shevening, the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. A lot of my viewers are in, come from different countries, so I'm assuming that there are different requirements for these three different scholarships. Can you speak a bit about the requirements of each? Yes, uh, Commonwealth Shared Commonwealth uh, Scholarship by the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission, which is popularly known as the Commonwealth Scholarship, and another one is Shavening Scholarship. They have specific criteria, distinctive criteria, like for Commonwealth Shared, it's it's a tricky scholarship in a sense. Like uh, the university have requirements. Uh, they they give circular for a specific master's course. Like you, if you have something in your mind, not necessarily that the university will provide that scholarship that year. So you need to wait when uh, they will give the circular and you never know because it depends on their uh, yearly or they have some uh, uh, agenda to focus on a specific course, then they uh, give a circulation uh, over 
the website of the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission and also you can find it in the university portal. So you need to match your background, you need to match your you know previous academic qualifications and also your work profile. If you have publication, definitely that will always create a value, then you can apply for that scholarship. Uh, Shivening is eligible for all countries like any uh, you know interest, interested students from any part of the world they can apply for Shivening. It is called uh, the global uh, masters of the UK. So uh, for Shivening, uh, you can apply to any course. Still, they have like university uh, you know specifications, but it covers almost all the universities of the UK, reputed universities of the UK. I, I want to stress on the word reputed universities of the UK. Commonwealth uh, scholarship is also, you know, open to all courses, but uh, for Commonwealth scholarship, you need to be nominated by your nominating agency. For Bangladesh, it's uh, the uh, University Grants Commission. For India, Pakistan, they have a separate, separate, you know, like uh, for each country, they have their own uh, distinctive uh, nominating agency. So you need to apply through the nominating agency first if you are shortlisted and then they will have a viva or written whatever for each country they have their specific uh, process of selecting or nominating the final candidate then you need to apply to Commonwealth Scholarship Commission after getting the nomination from your agency, then you can apply for that. For Commonwealth Scholarship, they also have uh, some criteria like work, work experience always creates value, relevant work experience, and you need to match your academic, you know, previous academic result, previous academic background, uh, and then uh, definitely you have some extra qualification like publication or leadership capability. I, I, I definitely want to mentioned that for shivening leadership is the basic like if you have a you know a lower cgpa kind of you know average cgpa still you are very much eligible for shivening if you have an extraordinary relevant uh, leadership uh, you know proven experience which will you know shake the evaluators like okay this is amazing outstanding if you have something like that for common but scholarship they always focus on academic like you need to have a standard CGPA, not like four out of four, but definitely if you something like sometimes they consider like you need to have a very good academic background with relevant work experience. These are the basic uh, difference between these two, two scholarships. Thank you so much for sharing them. I'm assuming that more information can also be gained from the specific websites of those scholarships. So if you're looking for more information, don't take our word for it. Also check out the websites because there have been updates every now and then and they will be provided in the description of this video. I wanted to ask about the scholarship application process whether it is the same as applying to a university, whether there are two separate applications. Could you on a high level speak briefly about the three scholarship application processes? Okay, so uh, I'll talk about my scholarship first, which I accepted, Commonwealth Scholarship, like at first I need to apply to the University Grants Commission Bangladesh. So they have a separate uh, document. It's it's kind of a template. It's always templated. So you cannot just send your CV and say like shortlist me. So there is a template which you need to fill up very carefully. Uh, they look for your percentage of you know uh, at, uh, the last academic. Uh, uh, course you attended, your job experience and all that, you need to submit it and most of the cases they need hard copy, not online version for University Grants Commission. After this submission, they shortlist like uh, 10 candidates for each course, they will call you for a VIVA and the VIVA is, uh, you know, uh, happen always they organize it at the University Grants Commission office and there are like three distinctive professors or you know high profile uh, interviewers will be there which you don't know who will be at that moment and uh, they will take your viva and they usually select one or two candidates from each course it depends on the availability of the scholarship which we don't know we do not have any access to that number only university grants commission know like how many students they are going to send after this nomination, it doesn't mean you have already is, you know, received the scholarship. It's just the start. After getting that uh, nomination, uh, they give you a very limited time, only like 15 days or 20 days, and you need to apply everything. You need to complete all the procedures to Commonwealth Scholarship Commission. And uh, it is the whole procedure. Like uh, the, you need to submit your SOPs. Uh, that is also templated by Commonwealth Scholarship Commission. You need to submit, uh, like uh, they provide your reference emails and other stuff, all your academic transcripts and everything needs to be submitted. And 
you know in a sense like you need to submit a full academic profile to commonwealth scholarship commission and you at the same time you should start procedure of university admission in the portal of commonwealth they ask you for three universities like preference one two three which one is your preferred course which one is your preferred university and you need to seek admission from those three universities i suggest to apply for three of the universities because if you miss number one uh, priority like your preference then you can have the chance to enroll to number two or number three but if you are not getting any of these three options you are not eligible for getting the scholarship. So you need to keep in your mind that your universities will have, they must have separate criteria. So here, the learning point should be if you have like CGPA, uh, suppose 3.5, and your university have specifically mentioned that will not allow anyone uh, below 3.7, you will not get admission to that university because they are not going to shortlist you. It, it, some universities have separate ILTS requirement, like 7.5 for a specific course, maybe for another course they are requiring 6.5 or 7. So you need to know, you need to research on the specific course uh, criteria because Apart from submitting the scholarship to the Commonwealth Commission, you need to submit application to the university where you need separate, where you need separate uh, references. So see, you need like at least uh, six reference for uh, three universities and two reference for a uh, Commonwealth Scholarship Commission. So you need at least eight references at that point to apply. And here, I think I should also also mention that uh, your courses should be similar. Uh, if you are applying for, you know, global health in one course and in another course you are applying for, suppose, uh, something irrelevant to health, something like economics. So it's not going to work. Even in health, there are a couple of, you know, uh, similarities like mental health. I, I applied for global mental health and at the same time I applied for mental health research. Another, uh, I think the reason behind this was like, I wanted to show that I'm passionate for mental health. If I miss some uh, one option, I'll, I'll get the chance for a second option. Then if uh, I tell you about shavening, it's about, uh, it's, it's almost a similar, but you do not need any uh, nominating agents. You need to apply to Shivening first. Shivening has a distinctive, it's absolutely different than Commonwealth. Like the, the, the SOPs, they, they call it like leadership question and responses. So this leadership question should be uh, different and your examples should be very much practical. What you did, like you should have a proven example of leadership, definition of leadership, how you perceived it, how you practiced it. And in addition to your academic courses, I always believe like uh, the way I clicked, I think there was a really between my academic and my uh, leadership at, uh, like initiative side I took and you always I prefer like uh, I suggested some of my juniors to apply for uh, shipping later on and most of them received it it's very interesting like at least they've been to the uh, nomination phase and they have been to the interview at least so they they did what they did like uh, they added uh, the proven experience. If you have solid experience, like in a website, it's 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 written, or in a newspaper, or in a scientific journal. If you did something, uh, you, know, you received an international recognition. Add that link to your profile so that they can click and see you actually have received it. Do not say vague things like "I want to do that." Shivani is looking for what you did and what is your potential to do something big, uh, big uh, with the background you have with the previous leadership experience you have that's what i perceive from the scholarship portal at the same time i suggest you to apply for the courses because when shivening will get back to you uh like you you are shortlisted or you're selected for shivening then you necessarily I, I don't think you'll have that time to apply for university admission so you need to apply and here you also need to give three preferences one two three course and uh universities so you should apply for those universities at the same time so it should be a simultaneous process Commonwealth shared is a bit, uh, you know, easier in a sense, like if you are matched to the course, then it's easier. If not, then there is no use of, you know, you're applying for that because they're not going to choose you. So uh, if the course and your background is absolute, then you should uh, apply for Commonwealth shared. And in that case, you should uh, apply from the university website, the university, they have a separate team for Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, you just need to click and then they will take you to the Commonwealth portal and you can uh, use, uh, but you need to remember that you 
can apply for commonwealth shared and commonwealth at the same time but if you are shortlisted for one selected for one at, at the same time they will actually they will email you to withdraw you like say like uh, just withdraw from uh, one portal because we cannot simultaneously proceed you with two two options so uh, you can apply for both my suggestion will be apply for both if you are you know uh, matched with a profile uh, shared commonwealth and then you need to wait because uh, the university will shortlist you which you have no access and they will absolutely choose you based on your academic profile your uh, publication history if you have your research experience and uh, the application you just have submitted to them they will nominate your name to the commonwealth scholarship portal and then commonwealth will get back to you so it's uh, it's it seems like for commonwealth shared you do not need to proceed with the university grants commission you do not need to face embassy or british high commission shivening you, you they will call you for a you know british high commission interview where there will be another high profile interview so uh, these three uh, portals are like quite different but the only similarity you like you can find is all of these scholarships will look for a very very dynamic a very structured sop and uh, the more evidence of leadership the more evidence of academic you know efficiency you can uh, submit you can show to them that will create more value to you